Good morning. My name is uh, Paolo Dontero and I'm a chief urology in an academic hospital in uh, Torino, Italy. And today I'm going to make a discussion about the potential role of urinary marker in the setting of uh, the follow-up of non-mostly invasive bladder cancer. Recent evidence uh, has actually foster a surge of renowned enthusiasm towards the use of urinary marker, which has been overlooked for many years. And this, is, uh, this uh, enthusiasm has been captured by the European uh, guidelines on normal invasive blood cancer. Now, if we look at the currently recommended follow-up scheme in a most invasive blood cancer, you, you can see that uh, cystoscopy and uh, uh, in a secondary manner, urine cytology represented the mainstay. And uh, there is a, a risk adapted uh, intensity of the follow-up. If you have a low risk uh, non-muscle invasive blood cancer, the patient will end up having uh, around eight cystoscopies over eight years. Whereas uh, in case of a high risk non-muscle invasive blood cancer, you can see that for the first two years, uh, the patient will have to undergo a cystoscopy every three months uh, and then uh, every six months uh, for up to five years, with an overall number of 20 cystoscopies over five years. And if the patient has an intermediate risk, uh, let's say individualized scheme, which is in between the rate of cystoscopies of low risk and high risk uh, tumor. So this uh, burden of follow-up uh, has uh, several shortcomings. First of all, uh, the patient quality of life. The patient is not uh, very keen to undergo this invasive uh, procedure. At the same time, this uh, scheme uh, is becoming really cumbersome for our healthcare systems. Now, one way to integrate uh, in the follow-up scheme is actually to have an aid to reduce uh, the current uh, burden of follow-up. For instance, uh, a negative biomarker could be employed to delay the cystoscopy and the urine cytology, provided that uh, we minimize uh, the risk of uh, overlooking a tumor and particularly to overlook a high-risk tumor, which may reflect uh, in losing a window of opportunity of our delayed diagnosis. At the same time, we have uh, to make sure that our marker has a significant uh, specificity so that uh, we do not incur in the risk to have too many cystoscopies as, as a result of using the biomarker. Now, if we look at this, uh, recent uh, systematic review, we, we see that uh, indeed there are at least uh, four urinary markers which uh, seems to be promising and serve the purpose of uh, being used uh, integrated in the follow-up scheme in order potentially to reduce uh, the number of uh, cystoscopies. And uh, you can see that all these markers have uh, an interesting, quite high sensitivity, overall sensitivity. The specificity is not too bad, but particularly they, they carry a, a negative predictive value, which uh, really exceeds 90% uh, in, uh, in all, all of them. And uh, what is also interesting is that this urinary marker have a, a sensitivity that uh, is even higher when we concentrate on the high grade disease with a specificity that is always very good and a negative uh, predictive value that is close to 100%. So these uh, new markers have, um, 
let's say, um, foster some enthusiasm from the, the guidelines. The, the guidelines, uh, European guidelines in 2021, uh, uh, they were simply uh, hoping uh, uh, for having uh, potential uh, useful urinary markers uh, in that uh, they could be effectively integrated uh, in the follow-up scheme. So it was something like it was missing. But in uh, 2022, the guidelines uh, uh, acknowledge uh, the existence of a few markers, the four urinary markers, which are promising in that they, they really seem to fulfill the potential integration uh, in, uh, in the follow-up uh, follow scheme. Although we have to be careful to say that at the moment, uh, these urinary markers are not recommended. And uh, let's say that further evidence is awaited. But how can, what could be the role of this urinary marker in the follow-up uh, scheme? Well, they could uh, uh, use as an agent to urine cystoscopy, so in combination with, uh, with the cystoscopy, or they could be alternated to cystoscopy in the sense of reducing the number of cystoscopy, or ideally, this urinary marker could just fully replace uh, the need of a cystoscopy. And uh, I think that uh, uh, the way, the meaning that we want to give to this marker strongly depends uh, on the risk of the disease that we are following up, the, 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 the risk of this mammoth invasive bladder cancer that uh, we, we, we are following up for many years, usually. And this is uh, how uh, a panel of experts has just uh, uh, rated the, the potential uh, meaning of using this marker in the follow-up. For instance, if we have a low risk non most invasive by the cancer, where we know that the, the risk of progression is as low as 1% at five years, uh, I think that uh, a urinary marker like the, with the feature that we have seen before with the, with a particular very high negative predictive value could be safe used to postpone the cystoscopy. It would not really be appropriate to use this marker as an agent to cystoscopy because our main aim in this contest is to reduce the, the number of cystoscopy, which I remind you, it's going to be around eight over five years. If we have an intermediate reason of most invasive but the cancer, where we know that the predicted risk of progression is around 5% over five years, again, the panel stated that it would be appropriate to uh, use a urinary marker, again, to alternating it with the cystoscopy in order to reduce the number of, uh, of uh, cystoscopies. On the contrary, if we have a high risk of muscle invasive the cancer that uh, we, we are following up, certainly it would be not appropriate to replace uh, uh, cystoscopy with, uh, with the urinary marker. Rather, the urinary marker in this constance could really play a role as an agent to cystoscopy so that uh, we can actually optimize uh, the ability, our ability to identify a high risk recurrence in this tumor. So in conclusion, we do have uh, four promising and commercial available urinary marker with high sensitivities and high negative predictive values, particularly for high grade disease. And the, the, the latest EAU guidelines acknowledge that these urinary biomarker are potentially of use in the surveillance of non most invasive the cancer. And the main use is to postpone a cystoscopy, so to reduce the number of cystoscopy in low intermediate risk non most invasive the cancer with the potential use as an agent to cystoscopy in high risk non most invasive the cancer. I thank you very much for your attention.